Hello everyone. Thank you so much for viewing my video again. So today we are going to discuss demystified multi assess. Okay, so if you have any question or any doubt on today's video, or if you have any suggest topic, okay, please send an email to me. So what is multi assess okay, in the old day? where there is hardly any communication system. We don't have this multi-access. Now we are talking about billions of communication system. And basically billions of devices want to assess limited resource like spectrum. Hence, it is very desired to support as many users as possible at the same time in an efficient and cost-effective way. There are several multi-access techniques, but these five are the most common one. Okay, number one, we have frequency division multi-access, okay, which is called FDMA in short. We also have TDMA, CDMA, OFDMA, and last but not least, SDMA. Okay, we will go in detail on the next few slides. Okay, FDMA, okay, in fact, is one of the earliest multi assess. Okay, so this FDMA is used in 1G. Okay, so this diagram here is in 3D, while the 2D diagram is on your right. So from this 3D diagram here, the different color actually denote the different user. Over here, you can see that all the user are assigned to one frequency. Okay, I guess it will be more clear to explain in 2D over here. Okay, so this is time versus frequency. And you can see that all users are actually all assigned to a unique frequency, which means that they do not share the frequency with another user. However, you can also see the limitation of FDMA. Like what I mentioned earlier on, we have billions of users. We can't afford to chop our frequency into a billion pieces and all assigned to a unique user. And also, you also can take a look over here. Okay, not all the users are going to occupy the frequency at all time. Hence, this FDMA okay, is actually phased up in today's modern multi assess. Next is TDMA. Okay, so TDMA is used by 2G. Okay, so if you take a look on this diagram here, Okay, you can see that at one frequency, it further divided into more user. Okay, so this is user one, user two, three, four, five, and six. From here, okay, you can see that how TDMA actually expand the number of user as compared to FDMA. Okay, so again, let's take a closer look on this 2D diagram. Okay, you can see that at one frequency, okay, it further subdivided into three user. Okay, user one, user two, user three, back to user one, two, three again. Okay, so basically with this technique, the TDMA actually expand more numbers of user. Okay, so you can imagine TDMA in a classroom environment. Okay, for example, in a classroom, everyone take the turn to transmit. So when it's not your turn, okay, you are not able to transmit any data. When it's your turn, then you transmit your data. Next is CDMA. Okay, CDMA, in fact, is also used by 3G. Okay, so how does this CDMA work? Okay, so every user are basically assigned to a unique code. And with the unique code, you can actually recover the message. So I always like to explain this in a simple term for my student to understand well on CDMA. Okay, 
CDMA in fact work like something like a walkie-talkie. Okay, for example, 005, 005, this is 001. Okay, so over here, you can see that 001 want to communicate with 005. So like what I mentioned earlier on, all the users are all assigned to a unique code. So for example, 001 want to talk to 005. So basically when 005 heard the code is mentioned, then it will use the code to recover back the message. So the rest of the user, when their code are not mentioned, okay, they will not bother to recover the message in the spectrum. Okay, so this is not 100% right about CDMA, but this gives you an idea how it can accommodate multiple user. Basically, all the user are assigned to a unique code, and basically based on the unique code, you actually look and recover your message when you are called upon. So this is CDMA. Next is OFDMA. Okay, in fact, OFDMA is a very huge topic. Okay, I probably need another video to explain to you what is OFDMA. Okay, but in short, if you take a look on this 2D diagram again, okay, you can see that basically OFDMA is a combination of TDMA and FDMA. Okay, so for example, here, okay, user one actually op occupied this chunk of data. Okay, for example, as I mentioned to you early on, for FDMA, basically the comms are not going to occupy the frequency at all the time. And for TDMA, when you have a lot of message to send, and basically you need to take your turn to send your message, then this will take a long time for you to send the message. But for OFDMA, it's slightly different. Basically, they actually reserve this frequency band and also this time slot for you to send the message. Hence, this OFDMA, in fact, is much more efficient as compared to FDMA and TDMA. Okay, so like what I mentioned, okay, probably I will do another video to further explain what is OFDMA. Okay, last but not least, SDMA. Okay, so SDMA is most commonly used in satellite. Okay, for example, in this zone here is in USA. In this zone here is in Singapore, for example. Okay, so there is no possibility that the communication path will be interfered because US and Singapore are so far away. And because, because of the large distance between these two countries, you can actually afford to reuse the frequency. Okay, so with this, you actually accommodate more user. Okay, so basically this is SDMA. Okay, with this, I end my video. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.